They say our country's creativity starts at the coast and works its way inward. I'd like to tell a different story. I'd argue that the heart of our nation is at its center. And when you feel its pulse, what you really feel is the beat just below the surface, underground, where it's not a level of popularity that you're after, it's a level of connection. That beat is the true creative energy inside like you. Kids do. Snoring, snoring, yeah. It's not enough to contain it. You have to let it out. You have to share it. Art leads into everything we do. Inspiring innovation, collaboration, flavor, growth, and community. As a brewer, I'm one of those artists. Inspired and hopefully inspiring. Here in Denver, we play by our own rules and to our own beat. A beat that will be felt coast to coast. These are the musicians at the heart of our scene. The first time we experienced Blue Book, they played high above the Denver City skyline within the walls of the Daniels and Fisher clock tower. They played an intimate show with Devochka's own Tom Hagerman 20 stories up, behind the faces of the clocks. Blue Book, Fair Children, Nathaniel Rateliff, Bella Caroli, Miss America, The Seven Hats. If you've had the pleasure of seeing any of these bands, then you've felt the power of Julie Davis and Joseph Pope III. They're a vital part of the Denver music scene and have been for some time. On stage, there is an air of mystery and intrigue. The sound is sexy and soulful. Julie's entrancing voice, alluring bass, and Joseph's haunting guitar. Listening to their music and watching them interact, it's easy to see how in love these two are with one another. You're out of the woods, you're out. We're Blue Book. We're so excited to be here tonight. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. We love playing at the Walnut Room.
we're looking to create kind of a um, I called it apocalyptic lounge as at the time kind of a, a digital um, and atmospheric landscape so let's talk uh, maybe about blue book and how long it's been around and <laughs> what its current status is. It was the first solo project I ever had about 10 years ago. Then I met Joe and we started touring a lot with Nathaniel Rateliff and kind of put our, put my, my projects on hold. But then we had a band called Fair, Fair Children and then we had a band called The Seven Hats. And so I decided that, like, for myself, that I would go back to Blue Book because it sort of was the first time that I had trusted myself to make music and so that's kind of why we... You went back to your roots. I did. <laughs> so, and then I, I actually was going to do it alone, the project alone, because Joe's been touring a lot with Nathaniel and I'm not touring anymore. But then he played a, his guitar on a bunch of the songs and I said, oh... It's... I weaseled my way. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So... Well, we do have a nine-month-old baby. That's right. <laughs> that's part of... <laughs> that's taking a lot of time. That absorbs a lot of it. He's yeah. very supportive of our music. <laughs> He is actually, he <laughs> loves the bass.
So what is it what is it like to be a musician in Denver right now? Well, it's just really hard to get out of Denver, literally and figuratively. It's difficult to build, it's difficult for any touring band to build draw, you know, unless you have some crazy exposure through a major label or something. I don't right, know, but, but the, the regional touring here is different than a place like Milwaukee or Chicago, where you've got a lot of places to go. Come back already? We're back. Look at that. Already. Maybe we can yes. have a beer. Yeah. Can we have a beer? Of course. <laughs> I want a beer. Cheers, thank you. How exciting. You know, the song Digital Sixes. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, I think so too. So it was written, you said, I think seven years ago. I think so. And by a much different Julie Davis, I'm sure. This is strange, but I had the student at the time who was a really cool kid. He was probably like in fifth grade. He was making flashcards. He could not remember his multiplication table, so we were making flashcards. And I was he's kind of artistic, so I was letting him like decorate them and do whatever. And he kept making his sixes really square. And I was like, what, do you do? what is that? And he's like, Those are, I'm making digital sixes. And I was like, Oh, wow. Like I totally stole that from a fifth grader, but <laughs> and then, but of course, like, then wonderful. I like couldn't get out of my head like digital sixes, digital sixes. Like I began to see this image of like these people in a factory making digital sixes, but they were like refugees or something, or like Holocaust victims or something that they were like being like forced. Like that was the whole scene was like very kind of apocalyptic, and so I feel like the actual like orchestration of the song or the arrangement of the song sort of kind of manifests like the, the tension that I was feeling at the time between like how mechanized things felt and how mach you know the machines were so integrated into our lives and how were we, we were these animals and we were these organic creatures kind of having to integrate with machines so that I feel like the song is successful in that way and I like that it contrasts with the rest of the set.
to talk about maybe another ring? Sure. And being in Germany and that oh, yeah, sleep that was deprivation. So and, weird. That was like a, a torture cell of sleep deprivation. So I went to Germany to see my family. My parents lived in Leonberg, which is like, I don't know, half an hour from Stuttgart. Um, I went over for Christmas and it was just a really dark time. I don't know exactly why. Probably because I couldn't sleep. I could, and you know, after a few days of not sleeping, you start to just. You become a monster. And everybody else was fine. I mean, I mean our relationship parent... was pretty new then, and it was definitely born of chaos. I think things were just. Yeah, Joe and I came together under some difficult circumstances. So, I think, I think... that was our first Christmas, but we weren't together. So that right. I don't know. That seemed weird too. Mm -hmm. And the time change was really strange, so I could never get him on the phone, and well, I didn't really a, know him the way I do now, so I think I didn't trust him. I think I felt like... We'd also spent all of our relationship together... In the van. ...every day. Yeah. So it was like a... <laughs> yeah. You know, the first time there was any distance physically between us. And so I think I, I wrote that song because I was so frustrated I couldn't get him on the phone. It's just one synth part, that song. It's really strange compared to other music, but it makes sense because I was in this dark room by myself trying to get a hold of Joe and I couldn't and I just like kind of vomited the song out. I wrote it in like five minutes about how I couldn't get a hold of him and that I didn't want to be just some other person trying to get him on the phone like everybody else and... I'm pretty popular. You are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I don't want to Christian Anderson story called The Snow Queen. If anyone's familiar with the tale, this is a part where Gerda is going to look for Kay. She's going to ask the river where he has gone.
yet to dig deeper into the web that is the Denver music scene and pull back some of the layers. It's really interesting to see how many bands these two have been a part of over the past decade and the impact that they've made. We get to see them evolve as musicians as they dive into parenthood. They have a new intention behind their sound, behind their live show, and for the future of Blue Book. So